Hey, it's Chris. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a water line in this basement. It's an old copper line. We'll be replacing it with a PEX using crimp style fittings. We're running this line because we originally had a exterior hose spigot that froze and burst and was kind of starting to flood the basement. So we had to address that. We got our valve here. It's shut off. We're going to actually replace from this just after this valve the entire line. So I figured might as well do the whole thing with PEX. We went and got a 100 foot roll, so that'll give us a not more than enough to do this one. And then this one, it's like 40 bucks. So it's really not that expensive. While we're at it, I figured let's just do the whole thing, take the copper out. Since this was fastened to the bottom. Um, I'm gonna repeat the same thing with the PEX. So rather, you could drill through all of your joists and you can do that either with a paddle bit or uh, a boring bit. You're probably gonna wanna use more of a boring style bit if you're doing a lot of these. Uh, especially with some of these, because these are like three, three and a half inches thick and then they're sisters. So there's a lot of wood to get through in an older house like this. It's built in 1883, I believe. So our first step here is gonna to be to remove this. And to do that, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna use our um, copper pipe cutter, and then we're also gonna use these to pull the hangers back. For stapling the PEX up, it's pretty simple. You have little clips like these, and basically once you install them, the PEX is gonna snap right into them just like that. It's a ring shank nail. You just nail it up in there. Um, so we will be using some of these fittings. Now these are a crimp style fitting and then we also have a crimp ring. These are sized for three quarter because that's the size of our pipe. And you have a crimper that looks somewhat like this and around they have different heads for different size. So we're using three quarters. Um, we'll show you how to do all that. This is super simple. You could do this um, on a Saturday morning by yourself. Our next step is to cut the popper pipe. The popper pipe. <laughs> cut the copper pipe where we're going to be starting the PEX install. Our standard pipe cutter doesn't fit here, so we're going to be using a compact style pipe cutter, which comes in handy for small spaces like this. It's a good idea to have a five gallon bucket on hand to catch all the water. There's still going to be some residual water in the line that's going to need to drain out, and we want to catch all that so we don't make a mess. Here I am applying some downward pressure on the cut line to get it to slope so that it drains out a little bit faster. If you do cut or bore through floor joists, make sure to consult the building code charts and tables as there are stipulations to where you can and cannot drill holes when boring through structural members. Here I'm just setting the copper pipe aside so it can be recycled later. Next we're going to fish the PEX through the hole. PEX B is really stiff. It's not a very flexible pipe and we have to be very careful that we don't bend or kink it because if we get a kink in this pipe, we cannot take it back out. And we'll just kind of unroll it so it's so we have enough length out to get to the spots we need to get to. We just need to fish it over to where our hose spigot comes into the house. Next, we'll be sure to put the crimp ring over the pipe before we put it on the fitting. Once it's on the fitting, we can push it down to the end. Now you don't want it right on the end of the pipe. You want a little bit of the pipe showing on the end. And then we are ready to crimp it down. When you crimp the pipe, you want to make sure that you are nice and square on it. You don't want to have a sideways crimp, otherwise it might not hold water. When using crimp style fittings like this, it comes with a gauge. And we use that gauge to double check and make sure that we have squeezed that crimp ring down enough all the way around the connection. When you are running PEX horizontally, you should support a minimum of every 32 inches. When you're running vertically, every four to six feet. Once we've ran the old work all the way to our new work, we are ready to make the connection. Hey ho, good neighbor. Our PEX tubing coming in. We have our old copper. The cut is a little bit long, so we have a little bit of extra. And to make the connection between these two, there's a couple different ways you can do it. There are solder on fittings, so you would solder on a, a PEX fitting on the end of this, and then you could slide that pe PEX over the fitting. We're going to be using a slip fitting. Now, sometimes these are push to connect is another way of saying that. This one is a little bit longer than your standard one. It's actually meant for if you have a splice on a line, like cut on one side, cut on the other side, slip this over. That's what this one's actually meant for. I don't have a shorter standard one with me. I'm not gonna run all the way back to the store to get it, so I'm just gonna use this for this application. It should work just fine. You're usually gonna have a couple parts that come with it. One of these is an inside cap that needs to get slipped inside of the PEX tubing. Your clean ensures that that PEX stays solid enough so that when 
the teeth come over it, that it doesn't move or doesn't shrink or bend, or it ensures that you get a good fit. There is a little bit of a debate out there to exactly what the longevity of these types of fittings are. They're awesome because they're fast, they are more expensive. If you were replumbing a whole house or a remodel where you're gonna cover it up, I would always, always use crimp fittings or something else. I wouldn't use these. Basically the reason behind that is there's this little uh, rubber grommet inside there and that's what's actually making this watertight seal. I mean, these are great for connecting different pipes, right? You can go copper to CVC, CPVC, you know, the PEX. So that's what's awesome about these, but I wouldn't necessarily use them in an application that you're gonna be covering the walls up. You see, we have some burrs on the inside of the copper pipe. We wanna take our tool and ream those out. This ensures a cleaner connection and helps smoother flow through the inside of the pipe. Then we are ready to install the push to connect fitting and we're just gonna slide it over the copper. Once that is done, we're ready to connect the packs. When we cut the packs, we want to make sure that it's long enough so that it gets past those teeth and into that rubber grommet. That way it has something to seal to. We'll want a nice perpendicular cut, and then we're going to take and slip this little piece inside of the packs. And this is the piece that ensures that those teeth bite in there without crimpling the packs. And lastly, we push to connect. Now is the moment of truth. So we are ready to test this bad boy for leaks. There you have it. That is one way to replace a copper water line going to an exterior hose spigot with PEX. If you want to see the actual spigot replacement video, you can catch that here or you can check out my channel for other random plumbing videos.